What is up guys, my name is Tyler and welcome back to the Swinning Career Mode. This is episode number 8 and before we get into it, I just want to apologize for the lack of uploads of this series. I've mainly been focusing on getting the Marseille Career Mode done and dusted. I just finished season 2 completely, I'm done recording it, I don't know when everything's going to be uploaded, but all of it is done being recorded so now I can focus on recording this series as well as the brand new Juventus series which of course will be uploaded alongside this series. Now this one, I kind of just want to keep on... The side, my Juventus series is going to be my main series. It's where I'm going to put most of my effort into. This will be kind of just something I can upload when I don't have time to fully edit the Juventus crew mode. It'll be something more laid back for you guys. More of you guys that are more, I guess, loyal, supportive fans, diehard fans that love Road to Glory career modes rather than just the normal standard career modes such as the Juventus one. So hopefully you guys can understand that. But if you recall in the last episode, I asked you guys for some help on who I should sign since we are now coming into the January transfer window. So you got, as you guys can see right now, we are in December. December 19th, we have three games left in this month. I'm going to be simulating two of them and playing one so that we can get into January in this episode. Now, I did ask you guys, as I said, for players that I should sign, and I put pretty much everyone you guys suggested into my shortlist. There were a few... Uh, players here and there that didn't go into the shortlist just because they weren't in my save Maybe they were added afterwards or when I searched up their name They just weren't there for whatever reason So I do apologize if some of your players aren't in here But most of them should be as you guys can see if we scroll down a lot of these guys were suggested down in the comment section If not, they're just players that I put in there because I think they'd be great signings personally So out of all of these we are hitting January very soon, as I said. We don't have a lot of money. We're probably going to have to offload certain players just to afford these guys. But the main ones are Freddie Woodman, just so we can have a keeper that we can actually train up. Because right now we have Vigaru. He's one rated less than Woodman. And he's been all right, to be fair. He had a shaky start, and he's kind of come back from that shaky start and has done actually pretty well. But I think it would be better to have someone like Freddie Woodman, who is our own keeper that we can train up and get higher rated, rather than a guy that's on loan. If we train him up, there's no point. Other than that, Carter, Vicker was, Carter Vickers, I should say, was suggested a lot. He's also a player I want to sign. I think he's the best U.S. center back prospect, even higher than Matt Miazga, who was also suggested in the comment section of the previous video. And I would say CCV, um, Woodman, and then after that, Brandon Gal Brendan Galloway, I should say, and then as well as Kakuta Mane would be kind of the key players I'm looking to sign in the January transfer window. Out of all of those... Probably, uh, I'd say Woodman, the highest priority, but after that, maybe Vickers or Galloway, just because I think we need a defender, but we definitely need that goalkeeper that we can train up on our own, so those are what we're going to be doing, those are the signings we're going to be trying to sign in January, I should say, but before we do so, we have a few things to look at, so if we head over to my transfer screen, you can see my finances are pretty low, and that's because I got a email saying, basically, we're going to lose a lot of players. So I've been sending out contract offers for certain players. Some players wanted a lot of money. So I've been just trying to get them really to accept anything they could. Uh, we got Michael Smith coming back. He is a player out on loan right now, but he's 65 rated. So I thought we might as well keep him. So next year we can sell him. He'll be worth a lot more then. There's no point in losing him on a free when he's 65 rated. So I thought we'd keep him. Same with Fabian Robert. I want to sell him, but we won't be able to sell him if he goes on a free. Obviously, Jonathan Obika declined his contract, but he should be accepting it soon. And as well, Yasser Kasim actually declined his contract and it looks like he's just gonna leave the club on a free without us being able to get any money from him Which is a bit disappointing the board came to us and said hey He doesn't want to sign that contract. He's gonna leave the club So a bit disappointed with that one, but there's nothing really I can do on top of that I did ask the board for some money as for 500,000 They said they can give me hundred and forty thousand so we're just gonna have to take that It's not a lot But it'll help at the end of the day when we hit into January because we do need that money But we're gonna go ahead and start off today's video with a simulation. It's in the league against Port Vale and we'll see what we can do against them. We are, of course, away from home with our first team, though. So you never know. Anything can happen. I don't really understand simulations. I usually thought, you know, when you're at home, you have a higher chance of winning. But lately, I've played games in my Marseille career mode where I come up against teams that are, like, bottom of the table. I'm at home, and I still lose. So you never know what's going to happen. Let's skip once we hit the 50th minute. We lose 2-0. All right, not a great start. And after that bad loss, we at least get some good news that Yasser Kasim is going to be staying at the club. He said he wanted to leave, but there you go. He wants to stay at the club, and we're actually probably going to be selling him anyway. I know he's a kind of a fan favorite at Swindon, I'd say, and I don't really want to sell too many Swindon players, but he's worth so much money, and there's more players out there that I want that I think it's worth selling him and bringing in better players, if that makes sense. So if you guys are Swindon fans, I apologize, but... It's the best way to improve in a road to glory career mode. Sorry if you guys heard that. Uh, my phone just decides to go off when I'm recording. Always when I'm recording. But 
Jonathan Obika declined his contract offer. I'll offer you your 2.6 mil million? That was if you made millions, like, jeez, that would be ridiculous. He's another player I want to sell come January, but we, of course, won't be able to sell him if he leaves on a free, so we need to make sure his contract is locked up so that we can. But before we get into any other business or games, we, of course, need to go through a training session. I did one off-camera before I started recording, and Taram almost got to that 64, and it looks like he's going to hit it in this session. Can he? Yes, he can. 64-rated Marcus Taram, almost a 68-rated Christian Pulisic, and Harry Winks is getting closer to that 64. And there we go. Jonathan Obika accepts his contract offer. He will be staying at the club at least for two more years unless we sell him, which, of course, is the plan. But now... It is Boxing Day. We're taking on Blackpool just a few short days after this game. We have a game that I need to be playing in the league. So we will be going with our set team for this one against Blackpool, who are obviously not the best of clubs in real life. It's kind of sad to see them fall as far as they have. But when you have bad owners, you have bad owners and your team is just going to suffer from it. And it sucks to see, but that happens sometimes. So hopefully we can get the win here against them. We're going to skip when we hit the 34th minute. Something different. And we draw 1-1 with Yasser Kassim getting injured. Looks like they missed a pin to go 2-0 ahead in the 82nd minute. We scored in the 88 to get the equalizer, but that's just not a great game. And to be honest, I've mentioned this in the Marseille career mode as well. I think simulating makes things a lot more interesting, especially in Road to Glories as well. Because in Road to Glories, I mean, you can easily just win the league each season, get promoted every single season. But I think simulating makes things a lot more tougher for you. It makes things a little bit more realistic as well in the sense that we won't be winning every single game that we play. So if we even make the playoffs, I'll be satisfied because, I mean, I could easily win the playoffs in uh, my first attempt. So it really doesn't matter too much where we finish. At least top six is the goal for the season. But now we can go ahead and get into another training session once again. Can Pulisic hit that 68 overall? I think he can in the session if he does well enough. And he doesn't do well enough. A C and an F, but he's still... It's a 68 overall. That's pretty surprising. I think he's the highest rated player in the team now, which is pretty impressive for him. He's, I think, level with Kasim in our team. How long is Kasim out for? Five weeks. We're not going to be able to sell him come January unless we do on deadline day if he gets recovered before then. But not looking likely that we're going to be selling him. But now we have a game in the league against Gillingham. It looks like they dropped out of the top seven. They are now in eighth place, still not far off the playoff spots. They're two points away from it. So they're still doing pretty well in the league. I definitely think it's a game we need to be playing. So we'll go ahead, set my lineup for that one, and we'll take a look at it alongside theirs. Our team is our normal starting 11. Nothing's changed whatsoever. And for them, they have an okay team, not a great team. We played them earlier this season. I can't remember if we won. But I think we did. Egan's a center back. I actually have for Swindon in my FM save that I've mentioned in the first few episodes of the series and in the intro of the series. Emmer's a decent center back as well. Former QPR player, if I'm not mistaken. It's not a bad side. I think we can get the win. Dak as well. I think won Football League Player of the Year, if I'm not mistaken. Or at least Young Player of the Year or something like that. I think maybe League One Player of the Year. I don't know. Either way, he's doing well in real life. So I think we definitely need to be worried about him as well. It's going to be an interesting game. Speaking of Dak, Grimes to Decevio Payne. Have a shot from range, Decevio. Made the keeper work, to be fair. From that resulting corner, we find Harry Winks. It's going to whip that one into Nordy Mukiele. He's still on the ball. He finds Nicky Ioze. Ioze is going to find Jordan Turnbull. Waits for the run of Matty Grimes. He's going to side foot it with his strong left foot. Beats the keeper easily. And in the eighth minute, we take a 1 0 lead. Here's the replay. Nordy Mukiele finds Nicky Ioze, who passes it back to another center back. And Jordan Turnbull, who waits for the run of Matty Grimes, who just goes into the box, side foots it past the keeper, and makes it 1 0. Comes Norris in the box. Norris crosses over. Mukiele misses it. Loft gets it on the volley. And thank God he puts it wide. Oh my God. Off the post. Decent chance from them. They get it back. McDonald from range. Nice save, Vigaru. Also, Debe to Dickinson. Dickinson cutting in. Finds McDonald first time. Puts it over the bar. Ayose putting it out wide to Christian Pulisic. It's going to beat one man off the dribble. Sees Nicky Ayose making a nice run in the box. Side foots it with his left foot. And it just goes wide of the post. Finding Samuel. Samuel in over to Dak. Oh my god, Vicru. Nice little Superman punch out of the box. Oh, that's a good ball in. Oh, Vicru. Coming up big from the corner. That's where we usually concede, but at least he did well there. This is probably their last chance of the game in the 87th minute from a corner. It's where we struggle. They win it, and it goes over the bar. This is definitely their last chance of the game. 90th minute. We just hit extra time. 
And they have the keeper up for it. Can we win that? Yes, we can. Matty Grimes, come on. Marcus Taram, can we get a goal? Marcus Taram, just push forward. We can get one. Marcus Taram shoots. It's going to roll in. Yes, it does. He was already celebrating 2-0. Bit of a jammy goal, but we'll take it. The keeper was up. It just allowed Taram to push forward, and he scores pretty easily, as you can see from the replay. So much space. Just needed to put it on target and put a little bit of power behind it. And then we got our second of the game, 2-0. And that's where the game's going to finish as well. 2-0, the final score, a game that I don't necessarily think we deserve to win. They had a lot of good chances. We only had a couple, and we made them pay. We were at least being clinical, to be fair. We got a few good opportunities from time to time, and when we did, we made them count. They had many opportunities, but their finish finishing was woeful. 52% possession to our 48% possession. We had a few more shots on target. Actually, one more shot on target, but they had more shots overall. If they kept those down, a few of their headers and a few of their volleys even, they probably could have made this a more interesting game, but I'll take the win regardless. Of course, in the voting for who's going to be player of the episode, you guys need to know the ratings. Vigaru getting a 9.6 with 10 saves. He's definitely probably number one on the list right now. Turnbull getting an eight as well, to be fair. Nathan Thompson, the captain with a 6.6. .6. Matty Grimes, the goal scorer with an 8.0. Pulisic got a 7.3. Not a bad performance. Welcome to January. It's now time to try to sign some players to help improve our squad and hopefully push for the playoffs or promotion this season. I did ask the board for a bit more money once again. This time they gave us a lot more and that will definitely help us bring in a few players. A few, a few of them you guys can see up here, obviously some of them you guys recommended to me. I did scout them to see what they were looking like, but it's nice to get a bit of money in to help us in our chase of trying to get a couple more players into the squad. But we're going to go ahead before we look at any of that stuff. We're going to do a training session to see if anyone else can grow in this window. Pulisic, of course, hit 68 last time. Can anyone go up this time? Not really. Taram at least gets an A and goes up in all of his chance creation stats, which is pretty good. He's close to that 65. Harry Winks hit 64, it looks like, after the month ended as we did enter January. So a few people, of course, are going to grow. But other than that, we'll head over to the office. What do we have going on in here? A transfer offer for Christian Pulisic from Brentford. You can go to hell. Pulisic is not leaving the club ever. He will be here for the long haul. And then another player that was actually on, not on my short list, but a player that was suggested a lot early on in the series is Adamola Lookman. And I actually been looking at him and I thought, you know what? Man, <laughs> looking at him. Uh, that's funny. Um, I thought he'd be a great signing. I mean, if we're losing Obika, we might as well bring in someone that can come off the bench, play cam and striker. And I think he'd be a good little signing at that. So we'll go ahead and try to bring him in for as cheap as we can. Try to offload some players that we don't want as well and see if we can bring him into the club. So I think Traore plus 100,000 maybe, that'd be pretty good. I also sent offers through for other players that I mentioned at the start of the episode that I want to go in for, so we'll see what we get back for those as well. I'm probably only gonna show you guys when I'm done going in for a player and when a transfer offer is accepted, so just so you guys know, I don't wanna make these episodes too long, as I believe we're probably already 10 minutes in at this point in this video, so I don't wanna make this too long, but I'll go ahead and advance forward now and show you guys what we get back. So we get a transfer offer in for Jamie Calvin. He's 48 rated, he's not worth like anything so we might as well just get rid of him goodbye good luck at your new club and we won't be missing you at all transfer offer accepted the first one of the window is going to be freddie woodman we offered over 200,000 pounds plus a player i think he was only worth yeah he's only worth 240,000. but i thought we'd get rid of a player as well just to one sweeten the deal and on top of that it would allow us to get rid of a player we don't need and help us on the wage side of things so i think that was pretty smart on my behalf we'll give him an important first team player role because that's what he's going to be the guru will uh, go to the bench, be our backup keeper for the season before he goes back to Liverpool next season. But Woodman, I definitely think would be a class signing. But other than that, where do Shrewsbury or however you pronounce their name, they sit 11th in the league. I think we need to be playing this game. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into it and probably only show you guys the goals. I want to keep this episode as short as possible, but get as much transfer business in as we can. No team sheets or anything. We're just going straight into it. It's our normal first team anyway. That looks like they have Whitbread or whatever you, however you pronounce his name. He's American center back, I do believe. But yeah, no team sheets. Let's just go and look at the goals. Vernon cutting into Wesolowski off the crossbar. First chance of the game. I know it's not a goal, but looking dangerous. Iose waits for Nathan Thompson to cut in from that right-hand side. Beautiful work from the right back. The captain cuts it back to Christian Pulisic. 
gets on the goal sheet, 57th minute, we're 1-0 ahead. And the replay, Nathan Thompson, beautiful work cutting inside here, beats their right back, cutting in, finds Christian Pulisic, and that's not their right back, that's their left back. Either way, we are 1-0 ahead. I don't think I've ever taken a free kick with Pulisic, but we're gonna try it, because we can. Because we freaking can, I thought that went in, but it didn't, and that's how the game ends, 1-0. I said I was only gonna show you the goals, but there was only one goal in that game, so I showed you guys a few of the highlights that happened as well, just so you guys can get a gist of how that game went. I don't think we were necessarily the better team. They just, again, with the last game that we played, weren't really clinical with their chances. You can see six shots and only one of them on target. They had more possession, but we were still able to come away with the win, which we will definitely take. Taking a look at the player ratings, our captain, Nathan Thompson, coming away with a 7.6 match rating. He did get an assist. Other than that, tackles one, he won one out of two tackles. Viguru only managed one save in that game, but not a bad performance. It was a pretty good team effort. Nathan Thompson coming away with the highest match rating, the only one in the seven, so keep that into account when you're voting for player of the episode. And after that game, we get the news that Jamie Calvin is now gone to Bohemian FC for 30,000. Doesn't really do much for our budget, but I guess it does get rid of a player, a squad player at the end of the day, which we don't need. So with that done, we now have a training session to go through before we go through the final few days before we end off the episode. I'm gonna try to get the Woodman deal done in this episode and then end it there. But to Ram going up to a 65 overall is pretty impressive. To be honest, I'm gonna train these guys as much as I can, but once we bring in Woodman and maybe Carter Vickers as well, they will be trained before I train these guys again, basically, if that makes any sense. They'll be trained because these guys have been trained for like half a season. It's now another set of players' turns to get trained, if that makes any sense. So we'll go ahead. Anything accepted? Nope. Yeah, they accepted an offer from a German team. I think it was... I think it was Cologne, maybe. I'm not too sure, but he's gone, so we can't go in for him. Maybe next year in the championship when we have more money, we can go for a player like Kakuta Mane. It looks like we're not going in for Brendan Galloway anymore. Just thought I'd tell you guys that now, just because he's a bit too expensive again. Another player that we can maybe go for when we hit the championship, but I'll go ahead and advance forward and see if we get Freddie Woodman's deal accepted. And there we go. Two sets of good news. Freddie Woodman's contract offer is accepted, and we get a transfer offer accepted for Adamola Lookman. Now, to be honest, in real life... Dresa Traore and a couple other players got in trouble for a shisha or something like that. I don't remember exactly. I know a couple of you guys linked it to me on Twitter after it happened. So I just thought I'd keep that into account and maybe just get rid of them. I don't want a negative image at the club. So why not go ahead and get rid of those players that aren't going to be doing the right things for you. And we'll send him to Charlton who kind of aren't really a great club in real life at the moment. So I think they'd take a player like Dresa Traore just because they need good players. So we'll bring in Adamola Lookman. We'll offer him a squad rotation player because frankly, that's what he will be. He won't be more than that. He'll be a player that comes off the bench for us for our first team and probably start in our second team. He'll be a nice little backup striker. So not too bad. Freddie Woman's contract offer is accepted. So we'll go ahead and bring him in as well. I did go in for Carter Vickers once again. And this time it's looking like it will probably be accepted. I don't know yet for sure, but I offered just straight cash. I've been trying to get rid of all of my players that I don't want anymore, but no one is budging whatsoever. Robert, Kasim. Uh, Obika, no one's interested, so I can't get rid of any players, meaning I'm just gonna have to go straight cash and then hope the other ones sell at some point during this window so we can bring in the more expensive players. But there is Freddie Woodman, 60 overall. He does have a real face in game, which of course I like, and we'll be able to train him now instead of Vigru. We obviously could train Vigru, but it'd be pointless because he's on loan, whereas Woodman is now our player officially, so it'll be smart to train him now. 61 reactions. Anything else versus gold keeping attributes? Is it down here? I think. Yeah, there we go. 62 diving, 65 reflexes. I think diving and reflexes are the mo most important things for keepers, in my opinion. Handling is obviously very important as well, but 65 reflexes is not too shabby alongside those 61 reactions. He's six foot one, which also helps as well with the three star weak foot, meaning he can clear the ball away if it's in danger as well. So. That is probably where we're going to end off the episode. If you guys did enjoy, please be sure to drop a like on the video. I'm going to aim for 50 likes. I kind of want to keep that in the medium uh, of the series, in the median, I should say, in terms of likes for this series, because I kind of want, you know, this to be like a side series, as I mentioned at the start of the video. I want this to be kind of for the loyal guys, the diehard guys that want to still watch me, but not my most popular series, if that makes sense. Because I still enjoy doing this, it's just it doesn't get as many views as other series on my channel. So be sure to drop a like, and I'll be be sure to continue doing this series. And this is where we'll end off the episode with a transfer offer for, a uh, contract offer for Cameron Carter Vickers. So, as I said, if you guys enjoyed, drop a like. And other than that, I've been T-Ray all day, or Tyler, and I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>